hi everyone welcome you all in the today's video we are going to discuss one of the very important question from interview which is how to perform database testing in selenium web driver so most of the people will confused here because selenium web driver is only meant for web testing or web application testing we can automate only web but how we can perform the database testing in selenium web driver so frankly say selenium web driver cannot automate any database related stuff it cannot connect to the database and cannot do any validations on the database but still sometimes in our projects there are certain test cases which we need to validate uh, data on the database side so normally i'll show you some example uh, how the database test case looks like and where the front end application also involved because we do certain transactions on the front end applications and those transactions are updating in the database table or not that we need to verify so i will show you some uh, sample applications and database and first we will do manual testing so we'll enter some data on the from front end application and then we will connect to the database and then we will validate the data is updated in the table or not okay once you understand uh, end to end test case of database test case from functional point of view then we will see how we can automate that so actually in the selenium web driver means we here we are we are going to use jdbc concept from java so by using jdbc java database connectivity we will connect to the database and fetch the data from the table and validate the data so whatever data we are passing or we are providing through front end application the same data should be there in the database table all the field level validation data level validations we can perform by using jdbc so now here we are going to integrate selenium web driver along with the jdbc then we can perform the database testing so first we will see manually how we can perform this and then we will see practically using selenium web driver now here i have a sample test case database test case so not what we have to do here is first we need to log into the application this is a sample web application which i have installed on my local machine so i am going to use it i also have access on the database so this is my front end application so first what you have to do is we need to uh, open this application uh, let me just open this application so once you open this application you will get the front end application okay this is basically open card application which i have installed in my local machine so now we need to go to my account and click on the register and here we have to pass the details of the account so once you click on continue here we will get one confirmation message like account is successfully registered or not so if you validate only that particular message that is not a complete testing so we are just verifying the uh, registering account only on the ui level or front end level but we don't exactly the same data is updated in the database or back end side or not so that also we need to test as part of database testing so now let me show you so let me enter some name okay so i am entering some name uh, david and john some name i am giving abcgmail.com i am passing some dummy email id and then i am passing some phone number i am passing a password and then click on privacy policy and just click on the continue so once you done this you will get one confirmation message like this so now by validating this message is not enough this is just only 50% of the testing your account has been created only from the ui you are passing the data you are you are sending the data and just checking this message is validated or not whether account is has been created or not and if this message is been successful then or if the message is displayed like account has been created then your registration is successful or not this is one side of validation from the front end application now the same data is updating in the back end or not that we need to validate so we also have some admin application so this is a application which can accessed by the customers or users but back end administrators will work on the data so we also have admin application now let me open that application there is a back end application uh let me open another tab and this is my uh, back end application so once you open this application let me just log in as an administrator admin admin so here we can see the details so so whatever the account we register successfully here if i just go back to the admin application and go to customers and go to click on the customers and here we can see the same record the same details which i have provided from the front end application so this is also one kind of uh, validation so here also we can validate but where exactly this data will be stored from where we exactly getting this data is we have a table in the database so that we need to exactly validate so let me connect to the database so for that 
I am using this is my basically my SQL database will be used at the back end. So I'm using SQL Workbench as a client application through which I can connect to the database. So here I already connect I already provided connection details. So these are the connection details of my database. And once you connect to this, okay, I'm just double click here how this will connect to the database. So once you connect it to the database, so now we can see the a table here. Uh, let me show you the table. Let me close this. So here open shop is my database in which that there are tables level. So in the tables, there are so many tables are there because it's a huge application. There are a lot of data need to store. So here we have one table called OC underscore customer. So in that particular table, all your registration details will be saved. So let us uh, fetch the table. So OC underscore customer. So this is the table. So which contains multiple columns like customer ID, store ID, first name, last name, email. So apart from the registration details, there are other details which will be automatically populated in the table. Now let me open the query editor and uh, I'm using this database. So I use uh, open shop database, use one command called use open shop. And uh, once you executed this command, this database will be connected. And now I'm executing one query here, observe this. Select a star from OC underscore. So OC underscore customer. So when I execute this query, which will give you the record. So now we can see here, this is the same record which have entered from the UI. The same record will be stored in this particular table. There are some other fields which are automatically populated by the database. So here we need to validate the data which we have provided from the UI, like first name, last name, email, telephone. And these are the details we have provided from the UI. And the password is also encrypted here. So whatever password we have passed in the UI, so this is basically encrypted. So mainly we have to validate these details. And first we need to check this record is present or not. Then these details are correctly uh, inserted on the proper fields or not, we need to verify. So this is actually database testing uh, in the functional point of view. So we do the operation on the front end application and the same data is reflecting on the table or not that we need to verify. So this is just a manual testing. So we have done some operation or transaction from the UI application. And here we got the confirmation message. And also we have connected to the database and we have seen the data is present here or not. So now the same thing we should be able to do through automation. So if I just look at here, which includes both the white box and black box. So from the application level, we have to do this uh, through Selenium code. So if I just go to my account, right, and register account here, this particular thing we can do by using Selenium web driver. So we can interact with this UI and we can uh, provide all the details. We can click on continue. We can verify the acknowledgement message. So till here, we can do by using Selenium web driver. But after completion of this, I want to connect to the database and then I'll execute this query and then I'll fetch this data and the data is properly updated or data is properly inserted or not, I want to verify. So this can be done by using JDBC concept from Java. Okay, so two things we uh, involved here, front end and also back end. So if you want to verify the admin part, you can also write the automation code for administrator part. You can just go to admin application, go to customers and here you can search this record is present in this table or not or directly we can uh, process this data or we can pass the data from the ui and the same data is reflecting on the database table or not we can verify so two things are involved here so now we'll see step by step how we can achieve this by using automation code so for that what i want to do is uh, let me go to eclipse and this is a project which is already created which is basically a maven project now inside the palm.xml, we already have two dependencies. Uh, one is WebDriver Manager dependency. The other one is Selenium Java dependency. In addition, we should also add one more dependency now because we are going to interact with the MySQL database. So we need to have database driver through which we can establish a connection to the database. We can fetch the data and we can validate the data. So we can, whatever we can do on the backend side. So we need that driver. So we need to download the driver first. So for that, let me just go to Maven repository and uh, from the Maven repository, search for MySQL JDBC or you can say MySQL. So you can see here MySQL connector. So if I just click on it and there are so many versions are available. Let's go to the latest version. And this is a dependency which we need to add. Go back to your Eclipse. 
now i am adding this dependency why we need to add this dependency because we need a driver to connect to the mysql database so this dependency will be changed from one database to another database so here this application is basically using mysql database as a backend so i'm using mysql dependency here so this is the one additional dependency which we need to add so now go back to the my package and let's create a automation code so for that i'm creating a new class i'll name it as uh, database database testing now let's take a main method okay now yes now we created a new class so here we need to do step by step guys so the first thing is we need to first automate the front end side that means we need to your launch your application first and then we need to go to my account then we need to click on the register then we need to fill all the details then we need to click on the continue and then verify the confirmation message so till here we can do by using selenium web driver okay so let me show you the code how we can write it so as a first step uh, we need to specify the data okay so here i have some data which is mentioned here if i just look at here uh, i provided some data you can also take this data from third party files like excel or notepad or whatever so i have few set of data so i can just hard code here uh, customer underscore first name customer underscore last name customer underscore email customer telephone customer password so I have some data values here so this data i'm going to use to register an account from the ui so first name last name email telephone password confirm password so these details i will provide you and once the data is updated in the database table then again i will validate the same data with this details okay so as a first step we will see the user registration from the ui user uh, registration from the ui so how we can perform the user registration so first of all we need to set up the driver and then we need to launch our application so basic stuff we have to do so if i just look at here uh, i copied some piece of code web driver manager dot chrome driver dot setup so which will set up the chrome browser and this will launch our chrome browser web driver driver equal to new chrome driver import this chrome driver now this will launch our application this will launch our browser and as soon as you launch my browser and i put a uh, implicit wait here so here duration dots second ten implicit wait i kept here and then i am launching the application url so this is a url which will launch your front end application and then maximize the application so from now we need to do uh, my account so we as soon as you launch your application then we need to go to the my account then we need to click on the register then you will get the registration page so what i will do is i'll inspect this register link so first of all i'll uh, i'll inspect the my account and then we go for the register link inspect this my account so in the selector hub uh, which is given some x path so let me use this, this x path to find the my account go back and here i'll say driver dot uh, find element by dot x path and specify that x path dot perform the click action you can also use text method no problem so after clicking on the my account then you'll get the register link and then inspect this link and this is x path which is generated by selector hub now i'm using that x path uh, say driver dot find element by dot x path specify that x path dot clicks so once you have done these two steps you will get the registration form so once you have done this you will get the registration form like this so now whatever data we specified here the same data we have to send uh, into this particular fields so first name last name email telephone password and confirm password okay so for that what i have done is uh, i already added uh, some steps here let me just go through so here i have identified all the elements by using name locator directly names are available so name first name send keys of this one so i'm passing the customer first name here and in the last name i'm passing the customer last name and in the email address i'm passing the customer email id similarly telephone and password and after that confirm password and uh, there is a one option called uh, this one so policy privacy right we need to select this and then only we can continue so for that i have selected here agree click and then click on the continue button so once we have done these steps then uh, this will display the acknowledgement message right so here once you provided the details so you will get the acknowledgement message your registration is successfully completed like this 
like this this is a message you will get so we need to verify this message is correct or not right so for that what we will do is uh, we will get the xpath of this element so we already created one xpath for that let me uh, ef12 so let's go to the developer tools and uh, go to the selector hub and here i already created one xpath let me check this xpath now you can see this is the xpath which is exactly pointing to this text your account has been created now by using this xpath we have to capture this and we need to verify it so for that what i will do is here i am getting the text by using driver.find element by dot xpath and here this is my xpath i am using dot get text so get text is a method by which we can extract the text value and i'm storing into string i say string confirmation message so now we need to verify this message is correct or not so how we can verify we can use one if condition here if the confirmation message right the confirmation message dot equals so dot equals so that message we have to capture from the ui right so that message you have to specify equals to this one your account has been created then i can simply say system dot out dot println just a moment okay so if this confirmation is equal then i can say system dot out dot println registration successful from the ui registration successful from the ui application from the application or we can say from the ui or application else okay so else simply i can say system dot dot, dot println and if you are using test range you can write assertion so here i am using sysout message registration not successful not successful okay so this is a validation which we can do from the ui suppose uh, somehow if the data is not correct or somehow application is not properly working or registration account will not work so in that case you will not get this message so in that time so this will throw some exception you will not get the proper confirmation message so what i can suggest you is keep in the try block everything even if and else block both and if there is an exception or if there is any exception or if there is any something wrong in the web application so what happens is uh, i can put this type block here okay if there is any uh, issues in the application then this will throw some exception so add that exception handle that exception in the catch block catch and here i say i don't know what exactly exception will throw so in that case we can directly specify exception e and here also i can write simple message uh, like uh, some problem in the ui some problem in the application so if there is no any problem so registration will be successful you will get this message i can print this value right so this is a verification we can done, uh, we can do by from the application so what exactly we have done is we have passed the details in the application and we have click on the continue button here and then we capture this message and we verifying that message is equal to this one or not your account has been created if it is equal then i'm saying registration successful from the ui application and if it is not equal registration is not successful but in some cases if the application is having some issues or registration page is not yet displayed this statement throw uh, like element not found exception or no such element exception like that so in those cases keep this uh, whole thing in the try block and handle that by using a catch block and here you can specify some problem in the application okay so till here whatever we have done this is all ui validation so from the application perspective we pass some data and we click on the continue and verified registration is successful or not okay now let me just uh, execute till here and we'll see whether it is working fine or not then we will add additional steps to verify the database now i run as a java application so now it is started chrome driver launching my browser opening my application url maximized now now you can see it is open the register uh, register account page and now you can see your account has been created perfectly fine so now we also got the message registration successful from the ui and application 
Now, if I just go back to the database manually, so execute this query one more time, you can see one more entry. This is the record which we have added just now. But till we haven't verified this through automation, just I'm verifying through manually, whether it is updating the table or not. Okay. So now the next thing is we need to verify the database side. So we have just verified only from the front end application side. So now we need to verify the same record or same details are updated in the database table or not that we need to verify. Okay. So how we can verify that. So for that, what you have to do is we need to add database validation code database validation start here. So how to verify the database? So first of all, to verify the database, we need to connect to the database and then we have to execute these statements and then we need to fetch the data. And once you fetch the data, then we need to verify this data is exactly matching with our uh, data, which we have provided initially. So all these things we have to do through JDBC. So if I go back in the Pomlet XML, we already added a MySQL JDBC driver. So dependency, which we already added. So this will automatically add the jar file. So now we need to connect to the database and we need to do database validation. So for that, what you have to do is as a first step, we have to establish the connection. So for that, we have to use a connection class object connection. Con is a variable equal to, we have a class called driver manager, driver manager dot get connection. So what this method will do is driver manager get connection method will return the connection object. And that connection object we have to store in the connection variable. So this should be from java.sql. So you will get these packages only if you have a MySQL driver. So that we already added by adding the dependency in the pom.xml. So if you don't have the driver, you will not get these packages. So import this connection class from Java to SQL. So driver.manager.driverManager.get connection is a method. And this one returns the connection object based on the connection details. So in the MySQL, we have to pass the connection string something like this. So if I just look at here, this is a called connection string, JDBC colon, MySQL colon. So currently database is installed on my local machine. So I say localhost colon 3306 is a port number where my database is running. And this is the name of the database, open shop. And I have a username, but I don't have a password. So I'm just saying empty. So if you have username and also password, then you can pass a username and password. So this will throw some exception, just add that exception. All right. So now this particular statement will establish the connection to the database and return the connection object. So by using this connection object, we have to frame a statement and then we have to execute the statement and then we have to fetch the results. Everything we can do by using this connection object. So through this connection, we have to execute a statement, which is basically a query. So for that, we have to create something called a statement class object statement STMT equal to, and this statement you have to pass through this connection. So con dot, there is a method called create a statement, create a statement. And now what I have done is through this connection, we are sending the statement object. And this statement also we need to import from java.sql package. Now using the statement, we have to execute our query. So let's frame the query here. And uh, I'm taking one string variable, query equal to, and in the double quotation. So whatever query we have executed, we are executing here to get this data. The same query you have to execute through your script. But here I don't need all the fields. So I need only few fields, whatever the fields or data I'm entering through application only, I need only those fields. So I'm writing one query here like this. Instead of star, you can directly specify the names of the columns, like first name, last name, email, telephone from OC customer. So this is the name of the table. So when I execute this query, you will get only few columns. You don't need to have all the columns. So now we need to verify this data correctly added or not. So the same query I'm going to execute through automation. Okay. So same query I'm executing through automation. So this is a query which we have to execute uh, through this statement object. So now take this STMT dot. There is a method called execute query. Okay. So execute query is a method. So in which we can execute this query. So we already stored this statement in the variable called query and that you can pass it. Now what happens is this particular uh, statement dot execute query method will execute the whole query on against the database. 
but once it is executed which will return the data also right which is basically a result set okay so we need to store the result set in a variable so execute query method will return the result set from this query so whatever the results we have got here the same results will be returned by this execute query so we have to create uh, one more object of result set class result set and r is equal to now this result set we have to import from again from java.sql package so as soon as you executed this query you got the results uh, you got the results in the result set so now we need to fetch the data one by one from the result set so now we, you you have all the data in the result set so from the result set we have to read each individual row from this table and compare the data with your expected data which we specified at the beginning okay so for that we have to write one while loop here so why we need to prefer while loop because we don't know how many records we have in the table okay so that's the reason we can prefer the while loop if you know exactly how many records we can go with the for loop so here what i will do is i'll put one condition called rs dot next so what this method will do is rs dot next will automatically check the next record is available or not if the next record is available then the condition becomes true then code will be executed the block of while will be executed if uh, there is no record found in the table then rs dot next will return false so inside this block what you have to do is we have to get the data from the each row one after another so first let us take one row we need to read first name last name email and telephone after that again first name last name email tell for each and every record we have to fetch so for that we have to use something called rs dot in rs all the rows and columns are there so we need to extract one by one so rs dot first name is a string type so i say get a string method get a string and uh, we have to specify exact column name what is that first name so that exactly we have to specify in the double quotations so this will give you the first name the value in the particular row so that i am going to store in one more variable called i'll say first name this is also variable so this is a different variable this is actual name of the column in the database or name of the field in the database table and here this is my own variable first name so like this we have to extract the last name email and telephone into multiple fields so let me put that so now we can see here string last name string email string telephone i captured all the four fields into first name last name email and telephone now i want to verify these things four fields i want to verify so first name last name email telephone i captured from the first row so this will return the first row so now we need to compare this with our expected uh, data which we have passed initially right so like a customer first name customer last name customer email customer telephone and customer password customer password is encrypted format so we are not going to verify that and rest of the fields we are going to verify so here itself i will put one if condition listen this carefully we have to write a logic properly if condition so what is our first expectation first name should be this one john and that particular first name dot equals dot equals and whatever first name i capture from the table equals this one not only first name right so we need to verify other fields also so we need to also specify the other fields also and end operator and customer last name dot equals to last name which we capture from the database and we also specify the other two fields so here i am specifying them so customer first name dot equals to first name and customer last name dot equals to last name customer email dot equals to email and customer telephone dot equals to telephone so all four fields i am validating so these are the fields which are captured from the database table and these are the variables which have specified at the beginning of the code where we specify the data and the same data we have passed through application right so we need to compare the details now if all of them equal exactly equal then what you have to do is in the if condition i will write system dot 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 print ln and here i will write record found record found in the table also i can say test passed because the same data we found in the table suppose if one of the field or one of the value is not matching this if condition become false so then we need to handle that also right 
So as soon as you found the record, suppose in the table, there are so many records are there. So how this is going to work first, it will take the first record data and comparing with our data as soon as it is matching, which will print it here. But if it is not matching, what happens? It will go up and get another record and again, get all the data and again, comparing it. So this will repeat multiple times. So as soon as we found the data here, we put the test pass, we print the test pass immediately break it, break the loop. If I don't break the loop, what happens, even though the record is found and data is matching, still it keep on continuing. If you have more number of records in a table. So as soon as you found the data here, just break it. That means we come out from the while loop. So after coming out of the while loop, then we have to check whether the data is suppose if the, there is no record in the table, finally, we should say the record not found also, right? So how we can handle that? We need to write a searching algorithm. So here I'm taking one variable called Boolean status and by default, I'll make it as a false. So now what I will do is as soon as you found this record in the table before exiting from the loop, I'll make the status value equal to true. True means what record is already found in the table. As soon as the record found in the table, I'll make the status equal to true, then come out from this a while loop. So once you come out from this while loop, again, I'm checking the condition. If the still status value still falls, status value still falls. What does that mean is record not found. So record not found. So here I'm writing system dot out dot print ln. So here I can print record not found. That means what test failed. Okay. Test failed. So this is a status variable we need to verify here after coming out of the while loop, but this variable we have to define outside of the while loop so that we will be able to access this out of the while loop. Okay. So if we keep this variable inside the while loop, that will be become the local variable of the while loop. So we cannot access this variable outside of the while loop. So we have to define this outside of the while. And as soon as you record found in the table, then immediately status becomes true. In that case, this condition will not match. So this message will not print. Suppose the status is equal to false and uh, the record is not found. It fetch all the records in the table. The record is not found in the table. Still status value is equal to false only. So after completion of this while loop, if the status value still false means what the record is not found in the table. So simply I can write if status equal to false system dot 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 print ln record not found test failed. Right? So this is how we will able to handle the database. So let me repeat once again, first we need to establish the connection to the database and we need to execute the statement for that. We need a statement class object and by using statement class object, we call execute query method in which we have to pass the query and this particular statement or query will return the result set. We have to store the result set in the variable called RS and then we have to read each and every record from the result set one after another. And once you get the data immediately, we will compare that with our expected data. And if all the fields are matching, then finally we say record found all the fields should match, not only one field. So all the fields are matching means then only I can say record found in the table test passed. As soon as you found the record immediately make the status value equal to true, then come out from the while loop or break the while loop. And then again, checking the status value still false means what record not found test is failed. So this is how we need to write a logic, which will verify the entry in the database. Okay. So let me just execute here. So let's go to the database. Currently we have uh, two records in the database. I just want to remove this database da data. So I can do this through admin application. So currently if I go to the admin application, how many customers we have. So from the admin application, we can delete the records. So currently two records are there. I'm selecting them and I deleted them now. So currently I don't have any customers list. Even if you go to the database again, execute this query. I don't have any records. Everything is empty now. So now go back now through automation code. I'm going to register a new account and the same details are populated in the database table or not that I'm verifying as part of database testing. Now let us try to execute this code and we'll see whether it is working fine or not run as Java application. Now Chrome driver was started successfully. Now it is launching my browser, opening my URL. Now first it will do the 
registration account through application URL. Now it is done. So once it is done, go back. Yes, now we can see registration successful from the UI and also record found in the table. Test is passed, right? So through automation code, we have verified that. Test is passed, record found in the table. So if you still want to cross check, go to the database and execute the same query. Now we will see the record here. And this entry we are verified. We have verified this entry through automation code. So by executing the same query through our automation script. So this is how we can do functional database testing. So which involves the front end and back end both. Okay. So how to perform the database testing in Selenium means what? By default, Selenium WebDriver doesn't support any database testing because Selenium WebDriver is only meant for web testing or UI testing. But we can still achieve database testing by integrating JDBC concept along with the WebDriver. So through JDBC, we can do a lot of things on the database side. We can connect to the database, we can execute the queries, we can validate the data, all this stuff we can do by using JDBC. So once you integrate JDBC along with a web driver, then we can achieve the database testing. Okay. So this is how we can perform the database testing using Selenium web driver along with the JDBC concept. Okay. Very important question. So please go through this video once again and watch it and practice it. In the next video, we will discuss a few many things. Thanks for watching guys.